Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Dr. Wen Chen Chen, the senior curator and the Louis Hollis Stone Chair of the East Asia Art at the Royal Ontario Museum. I'd like to begin by acknowledging that the realm sits on the ancestral lands of the Wanda, the Haudenosaunee Confederacy, and the Anishinaabe Nation, including Mississaugas of the Cree First Nation, since time immemorial to today. Uh, let me first share uh, my screen. Okay. Um, I'm delighted that you could join us for today's digital program celebrating the Year of the Dragon with the artist Wu Lanqian. Uh, the past weekend, we just celebrated the Lunar New Year. So I want to say Happy Lunar New Year to everyone and welcome to the Year of the Dragon. Today's program showcased the work of contemporary artist Wu Lanqian, whose monumental paintings, Heaven and Earth, has just been installed in the Ron's Joey and Toby Tanabon, Tanabon um, Gallery of China. These spectacular paintings are the latest of her works to be on display at the Ron. Uh, we are extremely grateful to her for her ongoing collaboration with the museum. Uh, Wu Lanqian has exhibited her works across the globe since 1995 and her work is collected in Australia, Europe, Asia, and North America by many prestigious institutions, such as Nelson Atkins Museum in Kansas City, Princeton University Art Museum, and the Royal Ontario Museum. A quick note on today's format, I will be hosting a conversation with my guests for the first part of the program, and we will open up the floor Q&A with the audience. Um, and I encourage you to submit your question and thoughts via Q&A features, and we will do our best to address them during the program. Um, but my apologies in advance if we cannot answer all your questions due to the time, time constraints. So now please join me in welcoming Wu Lan Qian. Hello. Hello. Hi. Um, <laughs> Dr. Wen Qian Zhen, thank you very much for inviting me to speak at today's program. And everyone, thank you very much for joining us today. I would like to take this opportunity to wish you all a very happy Lunar New Year. Um, we're thrilled to have you here and uh, have your paintings on display at RUN, uh, which we will dive into in a minute. Um, but first, uh, can I ask you to give us a brief introduction over yourself? Yes. Um, well, I was born and raised in Taiwan, and now I'm working as a contemporary Chinese in painter in the Northern America. From as early as I can remember, I knew that I want to become an artist. Around age nine, my world opened to Western art when my parents gave me a set of international museum catalog. The image just took my breath away. And from then on, I became determined to find the best teacher we could find. And I never looked back. Wow. During college, many people encouraged me to pursue conceptual art, but I was drawn to traditional in painting. I learned through copying masterpiece from the collection at the National Palace Museum in Taipei. My painting, after tray by, with a hair and two magpie, which is now in Rome's collection, is good example here. Yeah, this is the painting on the left by Wu Lan Qian, and the original work by tray by is on the right side, uh, now collected in the National uh, Palace Museum in Taipei. So besides learning the technique, the idea was that you absorb art 
with your soul, which I certainly did. I had several excellent teachers at the Chinese Culture University in Taipei. Most notably, Ou Hao Nian, a living master of the Linnan School, an important artist movement in modern Chinese in painting. I became his classroom assistant, which I deeply cherish. Every lesson, I start with making tea and prepare paper, brush, grinding ink, and other material before he arrived. He was the same with other teachers. And between 1996 and 1998, I studied at New York University, where I explore oil and aquarelle painting. I studied with Arnold Meshes, who was infectious passionate about painting and studying art in New York City, rounded out my artistic formation and gave me the opportunity to further develop Eastern and Western mode of expression. After my graduation, I returned to in painting and began developing a more personal style. I feel that in and paper allow me to express myself to the fullest extent possible. Mm -hmm. I see my painting like poetry, which always has deeper meaning beyond the beauty of the world. I have been working as an independent artist in the United States for more than 22 years. Even though my studio is in Los Angeles, I often work internationally with gallery and museum to exhibit my work. Thank you. Thank you so much for sharing this uh, entire story of your journey. I am very particularly impressed how early, uh, at age of nine, you say, and you you were sort of already decided that you want to become an artist because many of us never follow through our childhood dreams. Uh -huh. um, that you did, and that's Thank fabulous. Um, that's diving to um, your painting now. Um, so um, I guess the most people seeing this painting would be curious. To, well, um, under what kind of circumstance did you create this works and uh, what inspired you to pen the motif of the dragons? I mean, is there anything special about the subject of the dragons to you personally? Yeah, thank you for the question. But the global turmoil caused the pandemic, war, mass migration, and extreme weather events combined with Chinese loaded year of the dragon are the context in which I create heaven and earth. Like all my painting, I explore universal themes that span culture, time, and space. I paint my dragon in this spirit. I began exploring the idea of a painting a pair of a dragon after study the collection at Royal Ontario Museum in 2021. And I should thank you, Dr. Wen Qianzhen, for giving me the opportunity to study Rome's Chinese art collection. Oh, you're very welcome. So this Thank is a, one of the pieces that uh, Lan Qian actually um, mentioned, the object she studied at the Royal Tower Museum. This piece actually is still on display in the art gallery. Um, it's, a, it's a red lacquer -like box uh, made in the Qing Dynasty with a sort of almost frontal faced dragon here. You can see actually some similarity between this box and the Lan Qian's dragons, right? 
So how did you um, research this topic before drafting the paintings? I mean, dragon is, uh, anyone knows, is a mythical kind of creature, it's not a real animal. So how do you know uh, what dragons are supposed to look like? Yes, uh, thank you for your question. After visiting at Rome, I continued my research in the National Palace Museum in Taipei. And I traveled Beigang in the southern part of Taiwan to see the dragon column in the famous Cao Tian Temple. I also studied in painting with dragon, especially the one painted by the famous Southern Song Dynasty painter Chen Rong in the collection of the Museum of Fine Art in Boston. And there was another Song Dynasty painter, Dong Yu. He wrote an analysis about painting dragon. He said, to paint a dragon, there should be three section and nine likeness. The three section of a dragon are head to neck, neck to belly, belly to tail. And the night likeness are a summation of a traditional dragon imagery. He said dragon has antlers like deer, a head like a cow, eyes like a shrimp, a mm -hmm. mouth like a donkey, a belly like a snake, scale like a fish, feet like a phoenix, a whisker like a human, and ear like elephant. Isn't that interesting? Dragon are, of course, imaginary creature, which he described very, very seriously. And he set the standard, which was followed by painter of a later generation. So based on Dongyi's theory of dragon painting, I began researching and sketching dragon parts at the zoo, in reptile house and birth house, and back in my studio. I expand on my research note and sketch. I begin, began composing heaven and earth. So here are some of my study sketch that I would like to share with you. Yeah, so are you saying the snacks you actually sketched uh, in Zoo? Yes. Wow, I did. <laughs> that's interesting. Yeah, we, yeah, I, I, I'm really taken away that the, this um, Song Dynasty person, what's his name again? Uh, Dong Yu. Uh, Dong Yu, yeah. Uh, how he described the different parts of the dragon. Now you think it, dragon really is a composite kind of creature. For example, the body looks like a snake. Um, and the upper right, uh, upper left, sorry, the image, is it a crocodile? Yes, it is. Oh, okay. And that actually will remind you the dra dragon's uh, head and mouth. So that's uh, after a crocodile. It's very interesting. Um, yeah, I, I, there are many people have different series, but most notable yeah. the theory. And, so uh, what, what, uh, yeah. Sorry, what are those uh, feet? What kind of animals? Um, well, he said the feet like phoenix, as close to phoenix is eagle. So where I study yeah. he, eagle's feet. Oh, so these are eagles. Um, yeah. I insert a particular uh, one detail from your painting, as you can see the how you draw, uh, you draw the dragon feet there. So yeah. how about this uh, button two on the left side? Are they horns? Yes, they are real. Are the deer horns? Oh, deer horns. Interesting. Okay, so there's so many different parts. Um, I'm particularly uh, curious about the clouds, and um, so the clouds images are. Uh, you sketch it from the real clouds or, or from painting, other paintings? Yes, or? yes. When a very a crowd, uh, a cloudy day, mm -hmm. and, and I study the cloud, and then, um, of course, the cloud is a, is 
in it's different in my painting because I am following traditional Chinese paint, painting technique, mm -hmm. and which I will talk about later about the club. Mm -hmm. So the the so how about the dragons? Uh, um, what yes. are, yeah. This These are, are the study dragon of study like, dragons. Uh, the, the Song Dynasties are the famous painter oh, Chen. This, uh, by Chen Long. Yes. Um, by the way, I'm showing only one portion of this long scroll. Uh, Chen Long painted nine dragons here. So as you can see, these are the uh the sketches by Lan Qian, um, based on the Chen Long's um uh, painting. And so this is very very interesting. I've never thought about how you put together all different parts of the dragon um, through the real animals there. Um, thank you so much for sharing uh, your sketches with, with us. They look, look super interesting. Oh, one question I have, are these sketches are on pencil sketches or on Chinese brush, uh, ink brush? Uh, actually, it's a pencil. Pencils, oh, yeah. okay. Okay. Um, so, I have a, another uh, question, speaking of the Chinese brush, um, because you mentioned um, you actually use the traditional charge, tra uh, sorry, traditional Chinese brush and the ink to paint this dragon. And they are also painted on uh, mulberry paper, which is a type of the paper, uh, particularly for the traditional Chinese ink painting. And as you can see from this photo, they are mounted in a traditional hanging scroll format. And I don't know if you can see clearly on the lower side, um, the, there's this uh, rollers um, that's um, a hand scroll kind of format. Um, however, I think that the paintings uh, look quite different from a typical traditional Chinese uh, ink painting. What people um, actually who had seen these paintings told me that um, they feel the paintings look quite contemporary. Um, I guess, um, as some even comment that they remind them of the animations. I guess it's because the paintings are are very detailed and there's also this um, illuminating effect of, of the pearl balls you see here and um, very strong and even the line drawings of the dragons here. So can you talk about what kind of the techniques you used here? Are there any uh, traditional ink painting techniques or did you completely reinvent it or uh, it's a combination of the both? Sure. Um, it is interesting you should say that. Dragon have become very popular since the Harry Potter series. <laughs> and as well as in other movies, including mm -hmm. in animation. And no matter what style you paint a dragon, someone will see a link somewhere. Mm -hmm. And I use a very clear painting style. But when you look deeper, uh, there's no connection. Heaven and earth is a common term on the turbulent time we live in, mm -hmm. which you likely won't see when you casually looking at this painting. And as I mentioned, I did extensive research and study Chinese dragon motif in museum collection, in temple, ancient Chinese painting theory of the dragon, and as well as my study sketch of the different dragon parts. Heaven and Earth was created with traditional Chinese painting technique. Oh. I love Chinese painting two main style, mm -hmm. which is freehand brushwork style and materials brushwork painting style. I combine both styles throughout all my work. So in my first in painting, for example, um, I use a horsehair brush to create the texture cliff and rough region. And here is a good example. Let's take a look at this image data. You can see that the rock's texture looks like it was cut 
with an X. And the brush work that create this texture is called S cup stroke yes. in mm -hmm. traditional Chinese painting technique. And I use sheep hair brushes for the finer element. So I apply the meticulous painting technique to create the different tonality and character of a different dragon and the flame around their body mm -hmm. and the expression of a white cloud in the tradition. Can I interrupt you? That, um, yeah, sure. You're mentioning two kind of brushes. One is a horse hair. Horse hairs, yes. right? Yes. And the other is a uh, goat or? No, sheep. Oh, sheep. Yes. So uh, you say the horse hair applied to in the, um, the, the border kind of uh, lines that like this uh, X cut uh, mm -hmm. texture stroke. And um, are they like, a, what's the difference between uh, the two brushes? Why use two different types of brushes here? Well, the horse hair brush is uh, the texture, the, the when you feel it, the hair is very rough, oh. and therefore it can create a more uh, rock-like texture. And it's because mm -hmm. the rough texture, so it creates a much more coarse looking of stroke. Mm -hmm. Why sheep hair is very soft, when you feel the hair is very soft, so it's mm -hmm. easier to layer with a different tonality of the ink and different tonality of the color, and to be able to blend in well. So like the mustache of this dragon is done by the sheep uh, brush, brush? Oh, actually, um, the most that the, I, I use actually is a mixed hair brush over there, which okay. is in the center is hard and oh. out, outside is soft. Okay. And then, so this is like a mix between a fox and mm -hmm. deer's hair. So, Therefore, it's easier to create a very smooth and mm -hmm. very fluid line. Okay. So there are many different kind of uh, animal hairs used uh, in the Chinese brush. Um, they're all organic. Very interesting. Yes. Yeah. Sorry, um, continue about the clouds. Uh, you yeah, going sure. To clouds. Thank you. So the expression of a white cloud in the traditional Chinese painting is often achieved by leaving parts of the paper unpainted. So mm -hmm. you can see in heaven and earth that I left the white part in the cloud as blank paper. So yes, this painting are very much created in the ancient tradition of in painting. Thank mm -hmm. you. Okay. Now I can see uh, that uh, the we all learned about the traditional painting, uh, so-called texture strokes. Uh, here is the typical X cut stroke um, Lan Qian mentioned. And also as Lan Qian mentioned that snows or, or clouds uh, are not painted with the pigment in traditional Chinese painting. They often left empty by adding the inks that surround them to give them the form. Um, Thank you for sharing all this detail. This is really um, uh, exciting. We won't be able to see all this without your explanation. Thank you. Um, so um, I have a, um, a sort of a, another question about creating this works. Before um, you created this painting, you came to the run to study the objects, as you mentioned, and then visit the gallery space where um, the paintings would be installed. As you can see from this photograph uh, in our gallery, there is a, a kind of a hallway space in between the um, two cases. So it kind of posed a, a challenge in terms of a, how to make the two paintings as a pair. So visitor can view them together, yet at the same time, um, each works would stand out as an individual work. So how do you overcome this challenge? I know this is, I guess, the biggest challenge when I show you the gallery space. Um, so yeah. what's your intention with this uh, composition? Well, thank you. Um, this is a great question. In 2021, I came to Rome to see the installation of my painting, Perseverance, in the China Art Gallery. 
-hmm. And at that time, I started researching Rome's collection and uh, with the idea of creating a pair of dragon painting. And it was extremely helpful to see the gallery space, which I kept in mind when I was developing the composition. My aim was to create a dynamic composition and to bring tension into the work as an expression of opposite, such as good and evil, in and young, young and old, war and peace, etc. And you can see this composition style uh, called an S shape composition. And in some of the most famous Chinese paintings, such as in Trey Bai's Hair and Tuk Me Pai, uh, May we have next slide? Thank you. And so image here is an example of my painting after trip with two men. But notice here is the S shape composition, English letter S, is within the painting. Mm -hmm. like in heaven and earth, I use this composition technique not within one painting, but across the two. So instead of seeing God's face as challenge, I took it as an opportunity because the God land, I knew there would be an opening between the two walls where these two paintings will be displayed. And in my mind, this open space is the universe between the two dragons. Thank mm -hmm. you. Wow, that's interesting. I have not thought about uh, this interesting uh, suggestion, this uh, hallway, empty space. You say it's like a universe in between. So that actually um, represents very well the idea you see your, your dragon as the, the guardians between the heaven and earth, right? I remember you sent me this statement. Um, yeah. uh, next time when I walk through under that hallway, I feel protected. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Um, okay, I um, let's, uh, I wanna ask you a final question. Um, sure. So what's the meaning behind this painting? So what do you hope to convey to the audiences through your paintings? Yeah, thank you. What a question. I'm glad you asked me that. Heaven and earth has different layer of meaning. As in Chinese tradition, my god, my dragon are benevolent guardian, span east and west. They aim to protect human existence in the space between heaven and earth, which is particularly applied now when thinking about the pandemic, war, mass migration, and climate change, which are events that are currently affecting the entire world. Heaven and earth are meant to be shown together because the two dragons that interact with one and another. Mm -hmm. My intention with the composition was to introduce an ambiguous moment between the dragon. The younger dragon, perhaps a bit mischief, is wearing and flying through a dense cloud, holding the glowing pearl, while focus his gaze on the older dragon. His fist gaze and rays come create tension. Is he threatening or being playful? We do not know. And the older dragon crouched down, curving his body on a high ridge cliff and gazed back, also creating tension. 
Is he calm and wise or is he cautious and alert, ready to spring into action? Are they going to clash? Here too, we do not know. Their interaction in the painting is a slice of time. Just as current events around the world are slice of time. When looking at these two immensely powerful dragons, the tension is palpable similar to the, what the world is experienced today. Life is full of contradiction and opposite, good and evil, war and peace, hesitation and action, love and hate, etc. This exists in every society old and new. It defines who we are, it defines life itself, life and death. The dragon death echo the world which we live. This is what the painting symbolizes. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you for sort of um, giving us such an uh, in-depth understanding of the implication and meaning of your paintings. Now I can see the two dragons actually have age differences. Uh, the one that's flying on the sky, it's a much younger looking dragon. And the one couching on the, uh, the rock, it's older one, even um, his mustache is uh, longer. So I like this whole contrasting idea um, as you mentioned, there are always two sides of things, and they're always contradictory thought, etc. And that's the it's it's a, it's about life, right? Um, yeah. So thank you so much, Lan Qian, um, for sharing your thoughts with our audience. Um, due to the you're time welcome. constraint, I think we need to turn to the audience for question. Um, just a reminder: you can submit your question through the Q and A button on the screen. Um, before I check the Q&A box, I also want to mention that we have shared with you two links in the chat box. Uh, one is artist website and the other is the wrong online magazine piece on artists. So if you wish to learn more about Lan Qian's works, please check out these links. Um, so I will stop sharing the screen and uh, uh, check the question now. Okay. Um, okay. Um, here's a question from Melissa and our registrar, uh, registrar who actually helped uh, with the installation of your painting. So uh, she said, so great to hear about your process inspiration behind your work. Um, thank you. I had two questions. First one is, do you start with a foundational sketch underneath? before you start with your brushwork? And if so, what media do you use for that? Uh, I will mm -hmm. let you answer that first, and we will follow sure. by the second question. Uh, this is a very uh, good question. And so I start with uh, making a, a base draft in a smaller size of the paper. And then, so after I complete the smaller draft, I enlarged it to a large size. And then um, the, the material I use is a pencil on the paper. Oh, okay. So the draft in the small third size of paper um, um, is pencil, but then you enlarge them when you um, yes. apply to the, the uh, Mulberry paper. So yes. when you enlarge them, apply it, the, so directly you use the Chinese brush brush, right? Yes. Okay. So you cannot make any mistake, I assume. It's very difficult. Yes. To raise, that, right? is, that is the, the main um, difference between uh, Chinese ink painting and any other media is that there's no mistake allowed. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. So and that's so why, that, yeah. Mm -hmm. the one of the reasons uh, um, to be able to achieve the mastery of a skill, you have to have ample, uh, in a, a, a lot of practice. And mm -hmm. the Chinese people believe, painter believe that only once 
your master style, your complete, complete, um, is, is the, uh, the mastery skill is within you. You were finally able to freely express yourself. Before that, you can have um, achieved um, a painting of your own. You yes. have the first wife with the lens to copy masterpiece. And then mm -hmm. only after many years of practice, yet once you are full of once the skill you carry with, you are able to fully use this skill, and therefore then you are able to create your own painting. That wow. is the basic. Yeah, yeah. That would be really uh, challenging. Yeah. The 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 solid training in the traditional Chinese ink painting, it's it's so important. Um, so Melissa's second question is, do you often have an object or thing in mind before you visit a museum's collection for inspiration? Or have you ever visited a collection and found something that inspired you on the spot for an artwork? This is also a very good question. I think it's, um, it is both. Mm -hmm. Because um, I, I, for me, inspiration comes from things around me, around in my life, or when I visit a place, and the thing. And so it is. Um, I would say that most of the my words actually is all reflect of what um, I care in my life, what I emphasize that what I want to express, but the meaning in life. And then so I take inspiration from things when I visit in the museum and by spontaneous or by have a specific uh, focus in mind. So it's both way. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you. Um, Jane Liu has a, a question. Um, she says, thank you for a wonderful explanation of your painting techniques, um, different brush, uh, different effects, etc. cetera. Um, she has a question about the colors. So can you tell us what kind of pigment you use in painting? I think primarily the, the, um, it's an ink painting, but you did apply some colors, right? Yes, very light color. Um, yeah, this is also a very good question. Um, for me, that I feel the traditional uh, pigment, which is nature pigment, either vegetarian or uh, organic vegetarian or mineral pigment, they are the only pigment I use because they are natural, which mm -hmm. uh, not only because they are traditional Chinese painting pigment, but also because I believe that it can really achieve the best effect in my work. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. Um, um, there's another question from Baya. Um, does the number of the, the dragon's class have significance. I think you have the three class in your paintings, right? Well, actually, it's four. Oh, four. Yes. Okay, this is also a very good question. Um, um, I'm glad that actually uh, audience have noticed that. Um, as we all know that um, around uh, in Qin Dynasty, that dragon's club for emperor has to be five. That is simple, a royal family, and then. But my club only four. Why is that? Because I want my 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 dragon to belong to everybody. And then before the mm -hmm. royal family take over the symbol of the dragon, the dragon has only four club, and which is belong to everybody. And mm -hmm. that's why I like my dragon to be only four club instead of five. Oh, okay. Yeah. The five uh class dragon usually associated with the um the imperial family. Like the one I showed the red uh lacquer box, uh, uh, that's one has the uh five class for sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um I think it's time we have to wrap up. Um I just want to make some uh final closing remark. Thank you for all joining us today. And thank you to my guest, Lan Qian, uh, for participating uh, in this interesting conversation. Heaven on Earth uh, is now on display in the Bronze China Gallery on the first level. If you have already seen the installation, thank you. And I hope you visit again after this conversation. 
if you have not yet had the chance to visit, uh, we hope that um, you will make time uh, to do so in the coming weeks. Um, so thanks again for um, sharing a part of your day with us. We hope to see you soon in another RUN digital program. Um, thank you. For, thank you, everyone. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Yeah. And Lan Chen, thank you so much. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you so much, Wen Chen.